If this isn't the first M1 Mac Mini video that you've seen of mine, then you've probably heard me talk about why it's one of my favorite devices to come out in 2020. It's super compact, it's very capable, it's Wi-Fi 6 compatible, has a good amount of I.O. ports, looks super clean, and it's the cheapest way to get into the Mac OS ecosystem. But there's one mistake that I end up seeing a lot of people make that ends up costing them a ton of money. What's up guys, Sagi here, and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today we're gonna talk about the different ways that you can configure the M1 Mac Mini, what setup will work best for different types of users and how you can get an M1 Mac Mini that will work great for you while saving you a lot of green. Before we get to the actual configuration, let's talk about who the M1 Mac Mini is designed for because maybe it's not a good fit for you in concept. So first, it doesn't really look like any desktop that I've ever used. It's super compact. It's 7.7 .7 by 7.7 .7 inches, which is like 19.7 by 19.7 centimeters. And as far as the height, we're only looking at about 1.4 inches or 3.6 centimeters. And even though I knew how small it was when I pre-ordered it, when I got it and unboxed it, I was first like, that's it? But what's great is that even with the small form factor, you're still getting a lot of connection options, Bluetooth 5.0, Wi-Fi 6 compatibility, a headphone jack, and even a built-in speaker. And I know that some people have had issues with their Bluetooth connectivity. I haven't had issues with connectivity, but one funny thing that's happening right now is that when I connect the Magic Wireless Keyboard with number pad, which I talked about in my accessories video, it says that it can't figure out what keyboard it is. And you have to press the button next to the Shift key and it doesn't recognize it. The keyboard works great. It just says that it doesn't recognize it, which is weird. Hopefully Apple will fix that. Now back to the design, on top of this space saving form factor, we pile the extremely capable new M1 chip from Apple. And what we have is a do-it-all desktop with outstanding CPU performance, fast graphics, and a powerful neural engine. So if all that sounds good to you, you can pick one up starting at $699, which is actually less expensive than the previous model. But there is one limitation to this new design, which will force you to make a decision up front that will impact the performance of the M1 Mac Mini for the duration of its lifespan. And I'm talking about the fact that it's not upgradable. And let me tell you a little bit about my current system and you'll see why this is important. So when I bought my primary desktop from Main Gear, I was talking to the sales rep there about how much RAM I wanted. I was leaning towards getting 128 gigs and at the end, he convinced me to save some money and get 64 gigs. And now after more than a year of use, that has proven to be the right choice. Now another choice I had to make was about the size of the SSD drive for the operating system and programs. And I chose to go with one terabyte because I knew that would be plenty for what I needed and it's not even close to being half full now. I also added another SSD for local storage and for Dropbox, but all my video and image files live on my Synology disk station. Now the difference here is that I knew that if I made a mistake, if I didn't get enough RAM, didn't get enough storage space for either the operating system or for local storage, I could always upgrade. And depending on how I did, I may end up replacing a component or I would add to an existing component, but it wouldn't be a total loss of the system. With the M1 Mac Mini, what you get is what you're gonna have for as long as you own it. So let's make sure that you get what you need, starting with storage. Now, the base configuration of the M1 Mac Mini comes with 256 gigs of SSD storage and eight gigs of unified RAM. And that's the configuration that I chose for this computer because of how I plan to use it. And let's look at the storage and see what that actually gets us. Right now, the only apps that I added are Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe Media Encoder, and some Creative Cloud apps that were necessary. And that all comes out to about 7.5 gigs. Altogether, the applications that are on this Mac take up about 12.5 gigs of space. And after we add all the system files and everything else that's currently on this Mac, I'm still left with about 203 gigs of free space out of the 245 gigs that were available. So is that enough? Let's first talk about the upgrade options and then come back to this. The base configuration with the 256 gig SSD sells for 699. If you wanna to upgrade to 512, it'll cost you 899. One terabyte will be 1099 or two terabytes for 1499. When upgrading to the 512, we're paying 200 bucks for the additional 256 gigs because the base model already came with 256. 
going to one terabyte, we're adding 768 gigs for 400 bucks. And finally going to two terabytes where we're adding 1,792 gigs for 800 bucks. And the question you should be asking is, do I actually need this additional storage to be internal? So for example, one of my favorite external SSD is the Samsung T7, and it costs either 80 or 90 bucks, depending on what special is going on for 500 gigs. One terabyte costs 150 bucks, and going to two terabytes, you're looking at 250 bucks. So in every case, we're adding more storage for a fraction of the cost. Now, what some of you are probably thinking is that this really isn't a fair comparison because the internal storage on the Mac mini will be much faster and more efficient than this external storage. And that's true, but you are paying a very high premium for the internal storage. So you should only do that if you actually need it and if you're actually getting a significant return on that investment. I also know that there are reports about the M1 Mac mini read and write speeds with these external SSDs actually being slower than what you'd expect. So that's something that hopefully Apple can fix, but I'll get back to that in just a second. So for my use case, I don't actually need anything other than the applications and system files on the local storage drive. And I'm more than happy to work off of fast external SSDs and realistically, even two terabytes of internal storage aren't going to be enough to even store this year's video files. So I would be relying on an external solution regardless. Now, what if you don't run a YouTube channel and you're working with documents, spreadsheets, PDFs, or even editing photos? Will the internal SSD be faster than external ones? Of course, but will that actually be a significant difference? If you said to me that there's a task that I do every day and that the internal SSD will cut the runtime from four hours to two hours, that's a no brainer for me. But if I'm copying and pasting documents a few times a day and it takes one second instead of three seconds, then personally, that's not enough of an added value for me to spend that extra cash. I would take the lowest amount of internal storage that accommodates all the applications that you think you're gonna need over the next few years. And if in that estimation, you're even close to a breaking point, like let's say you thought you needed 200 gigs, then just jump up to 512 because it's not worth just not having enough. I would then add as much external storage as you want for a fraction of the cost. Because like I said, you can add two terabytes of Samsung T7 for 250 bucks. That will give you more total storage than upgrading the two terabytes. Plus you save 550 bucks. And even with the slower current read and write speeds, it's not really going to matter for what most people do. Now for some people it will, and hopefully that's something that Apple resolves very quickly. But again, for your average person working with documents, it's just not gonna make that big a difference. And these external SSDs also have the advantage of being portable. So I can use this same drive with my Mac mini, my Mac Air, my iPads, and my PC. I end up using two different external SSDs one is always attached to the Mac mini, that's this one. And another one is attached using a USB-C hub so that I can easily detach it and use it with another device. And if you wanna see that setup, I'll link to my accessories video up in the corner and at the end of this video. All right, so that takes care of storage, but what about the unified RAM? And should you get more than what the base configuration offers? Now, Apple says that the unified RAM in the M1 chip creates a single pool of high bandwidth, low latency memory which allows the apps to efficiently share data between the CPU, GPU, and the neural engine. And if you choose to go with eight gigs, there's no way to improve this after you buy your device. The more RAM your system has, the more apps you can run simultaneously, and the better they'll perform. So if for your workflow, you plan on running a lot of resource intensive apps, I can definitely see spending an additional 200 bucks and doubling the RAM to 16 gigs. For everything that I've thrown at this device, including video editing, I haven't felt like I really needed it. It's always nice to have more, but I haven't felt like the system can't handle it. But this will be your only chance to make this upgrade. It's not like with storage where you can compromise on performance, but keep adding external drives. If you think you need 16 gigs now, or if you think you might need it in the future, just go ahead and add it. Now, before I move on to the next section, if you like what you've seen so far and have gotten value from this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. 
It helps the video and the channel, and it lets me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. And if it's your first time here, hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay up to date on all the latest Apple gear and tutorials. All right, so to sum things up, what is the best value in terms of configuration for the M1 Mac Mini? Unless your specific work requires a lot of the absolute fastest internal storage, I would definitely look into getting the 256 or 512 of internal storage and then adding external SSD storage with drives like the Samsung T7 and the SanDisk Extreme Pro. This will give you the fastest drives for your applications and the external drives will be more than fast enough for most tasks. Also remember that you're getting the added benefit of portability and the option to use these drives with multiple devices. When it comes to RAM, I would recommend upgrading to the 16 gigs of RAM if you plan on simultaneously running a lot of resource intensive apps. If this is a machine that's being used to consume content and do basic work, the eight gigs of unified RAM will work great for you. Don't confuse that with the eight gigs of RAM you have on your 10 year old laptop. It's completely different. I'll put links in the description to where you can buy the M1 Mac mini, as well as the accessories that I mentioned in this video. I really hope I was able to give you a good overview of the best M1 Mac mini configuration in terms of value and maybe even save you some cash. If I did, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up, tweet it, share it, and if you haven't yet, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. You can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.